I express my gratitude and thanks for the organizers that they have given me this opportunity to share my thoughts with you on very important topic of solar power. I am also very happy to be sharing this days with Shri Arvind Gupta ji. I think so. This is fourth time in the last six months we are speaking one after another, and you always give a new perspective. I am also very happy that we have a very senior officer from a state, because you see it from supply side, they see they see it from tariff side and many other aspects as a state. So friends, uh, Gupta ji spoke mostly from supply side. I am going to speak more from the demand side and the pricing side because that the two sides make the market and markets are the ultimate. They they will decide ultimately where we will reach. Why are we promoting solar? If we go back to early 1980s, government of India had set up the Commission for Alternative Sources of Energy after the oil shocks. Solar is being promoted in India mainly for energy security because by electrifying our demand and de-digitalization, we can we can substitute and we are substituting a lot of imports of oil to India. So that is one, one rationale. Second rationale, of course, is now in the change scenario is the reduction in our emission intensity because solar is the main vehicle. So these are two main drivers for promoting solar in India. But there are two criteria which, are, which will prove to be test for solar. They have to pass. One is the affordability, and second is the import dependency. Because again, affordability, country like India can't ignore. It's impossible for a democracy. And with limited finances with us available to to subsidize the new technologies. And import dependency is important because we have the supreme objective of energy security while we meet our demand. There has been a lot of talk in the media and many publications internationally that solar power is so cheap, it's much cheap. But let me share with you some, what is the real cost of solar power? You know, recently IA has reiterated its the new concept called value adjusted life cycle cost of energy. But I took some time to dig out their website because it is this finding is against their current promotion of renewable energy. So I took some time to find they had published one report in 2018. It is still on the website. And this value adjusted life cycle cost of solar energy, it doesn't take into account the transmission and network augmentation costs, mind it. Even without those costs, for India, the value adjusted cost is in the range of 60 to 65 dollar per megawatt hour, which turns to rupees 5 per unit. Because you have cost of balancing, you have cost of storage, you have cost of reserves which a grid operator will require, and you have the standard cost for the, for the utilities. So it is around 5 rupees per unit. I will give you one more benchmark to support this. Recently, CA has come out with a report on RERTC. You must have all read it in this report which says the cost of RERTC, apart from transmission costs, because once you do RERTC, you will require transmission at multiple points, is in the range of rupees 4.95 to rupees 5.35. So two data points from CA and IA, they almost converge. Real cost of absorbing 
solar power in India is around 5 rupees per unit. This is a real cost from the, from the side of the consumer utility because affordability is an important thing. But solar is the, is the main savior for India. So we have to find out and discuss in what fashion, what things we should address to bring down this 5 rupees so that demand increases. Because without demand, only pushing supply side will not succeed beyond a point. Solar ha has also issues of imports because currently we are importing almost, I think, around 80% of the cells and we come import almost 100% of the polysilicon in gods and wafers. So, running away from one import dependency of oil and gas, we can't land up of having another import dependency on the policy on cells. So, promoting solar has two challenges. One is the real cost of absorbing solar, consuming solar and the imports. Let me talk of the demand side from the state perspective. India has taken a policy instrument for promoting renewables in terms of renewable purchase obligations. And friends, meeting renewable purchase obligations always has some additional cost. Otherwise, will not require obligations. Obligations are required because there is some additional costs. So how to minimize this additional cost? Because I entirely agree with R.P. Guptaji. As a responsible country, we can't ignore the, the perils or imperatives of the global warming. So we have to minimize the cost of meeting RPOs. I take a new perspective to share with you this morning. Some costs are being met by government of India in terms of capital subsidies being given in terms of RDSs because you might be wondering why RDSs because RDSs also when this gives grant for network expansion, it controls the rise in tariff because those grants, they keep the tariff rise in control. Government of India is giving subsidies for green energy corridor. It is giving subsidies of 75,000 crores for rooftop. It is now giving subsidies for PM Kusum. So that is one way of handling costs between center and state. We should also look at other technologies for keeping the emissions under control like hydro and nuclear because ultimate objective is energy security and emission intensity reduction while we keep affordability and import dependency in check. I will give you one set of data. CA publishes a weighted average sale of weighted average rate for sale of power. It is available on their website. For financial year 21-22, I quote, the hydro average weighted power of all new and old plants is rupees 2.51. We serve is the real cost of solar, which is rupees 5. Nuclear, the this cost of all plants put together, average cost is rupees 3.51. We serve is 5 rupees of solar. And thermal, the coal based power cost is 3.94 Vesav is 5 rupees of solar. So let us also try to look, promote the costs, these technologies of hydro and nuclear. But I agree that hydro and nuclear, they have their own problems. They can't come up so rapidly as solar is, is able to come because it's a short gestation. It's our own resource. Nuclear has its own problems. We are trying to do it. Hydro has its own issues and delays in commissioning power. So what can be done? I have a slightly radical view. When we sit down to fulfill RPO, let us look at the state picture. As a state, they have to prepare their resource adequacy plan, which of course should meet RPO for meeting the demand in the most cost effective manner. Because I understand for the power sector, emission part is taken care by the RPOs. 
सो इफ यू आर एबल टू सेटिस्फाई द कंडीशनलिटी ऑफ रिसोर्स एडिक्वेसी एंड आर पी ओज पावर सेक्टर इज डूइंग इट्स जॉब दैट इज माई अंडरस्टैंडिंग वाई शुड वी पुश विंड हाइड्रो सोलर ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू हैव एमिशंस अंडर कंट्रोल एंड मीट द डिमांड सो आई एम ए ग्रेट वोटरी फॉर फंजेबिलिटी ऑफ आर पी ओज डोंट पुश विंड और ऑफ शोर विंड और दिस विंड दैट विंड वी शुड हैव टोटल फंजेबिलिटी लेट स्टेट हैव ए डिस्क्रिप्शन वॉट इज इकोनॉमिक फॉर ए स्टेट एवरी स्टेट हैज ए डिफरेंट सरकमस्टांसिस सम स्टेट्स लाइक अरुणाचल प्रदेश दे आर रिच इन हाइड्रो वेर दे शुड बी आज टू पुट एडिशनल सोलर और विंड दे हैव डन देर बिट हिमाचल हैज डन बिट कोल्ड रिच स्टेट्स लाइक उत्तर प्रदेश एंड छत्तीसगढ़ their variable cost of generation is less than 2 rupees why they should be asked to put 2 and 1/2 rupees solar or 5 rupees solar they can have a good mix of coal and hydro their optimum cost can come down then there are certain states like odisha and all for them floating solar is good rooftop is good but there is a barrier why should be they be burdened with this transmission charge waiver it was good when it was a minimum percentage of the total transmission charges but now it is galloping it is becoming now gigantic because floating solar appears costly sir because of transmission charge you are waiving for the ari rich areas it is a it is a double whammy if the states can do floating solar or dre they start comparing with the charge transmission charge waiver so we have to keep it in check that this transmission charge waiver should be given in a limited manner only for new technologies otherwise come on give subsidies for green corridors states should have liberty to devise their own lease cost plan while meeting rpos and meeting the demand requirements we need explicit subsidies not hidden subsidies government can give vga for offshore wind why to push wind government can give gbi there is no need whatever takes takes it a least cost for indian citizens for indian industry that should be promoted there are three steps while i conclude which in my mind are important for pushing promoting solar solar top most is the cost reduction i entirely agree with rp gupta ji first is the india has higher cost of capital i was reading acme is is going to supply green ammonia to a company in norway not from india from oman why we should bring down the cost of capital by reducing the payment risk by by reducing risk further for the developers we should do more of r&d and bring higher efficiencies for cells and modules we should have competition why the wind lobby was successful to remove the reverse auction i am not in favor of that let the indian consumer be take be, be beneficiary of competition we should not talk of removing reverse auction only for promoting wind if the wind is to be promoted let the government of india give subsidy to it we should not promote something by piggy backing let me tell you one thing i was reading the my recent interview by bill gate you must have also read he talks the green premium that is the cost of technology over the present technology it is not going to be funded by developed countries forget about it they may talk anything about g20 table we have to work for r&d and innovation to bring this green premium down and down so first action is bring down the cost of solar second step how do you bring down the cost of solar you consume solar when it is there don't go for storage what is the panacea time of date tariffs i am a strong votary of time of date tariffs they should be pushed maximum through smart metering and through regulations all the states should be mandated that if you don't do tier tariff don't come to government of india for any assistance because then we can consume solar in the day when it is being generated so this 5 rupee will come down that is the second action point and third action point are the well functioning markets because when the states procure they have two uncertainties demand uncertainty and price uncertainty they don't know what will be my real demand in 2030 i am procuring now 
price, I don't know the, the technology, what technology, the prices may be different. Why the state should be overburdened with those PPAs forever? They should be have well-functioning markets so that they can optimize their costs through markets and they can converse to the national lease cost. I have a theory called state lease cost and national lease cost. National lease cost is very much less than the state lease cost. And the, if the markets are well functioning, the two will converge. That the state should take benefit of the, the national lease cost. So these are three steps I recommend. Efforts for reduction of cost of solar power, pushing time of day tariffs, and well functioning markets. Let the states bear it. One side note before I conclude is the carbon pricing, which is being recommended by many international organizations. I strongly believe carbon pricing is not a solution in a large scale for a country like India. It will be relevant for few chosen industries which are very high energy intensive. Carbon pricing, I don't believe, will support promoting solar for consumers. Thank you very much. Thank you.